Okay, hello everybody. Welcome everyone. Oh, I'm not muted. Okay, welcome everyone to the Masters of Kent Summer Series. This is our fourth installment. It's already been so much fun and we're glad you're here for our next one. I'm Sarah Marshall, the director of the Kent Memorial Library. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the great town of Kent. The library is fortunate to have so many generous supporters who have helped us raise the funds necessary to meet our budget for the year. We ha we've had over 190 donors at all levels of support. Since we can't have a party, this is our way of thanking you for pitching in. We're offering six fabulous programs, all free, from some of our local luminaries that showcase the variety of interesting and talented people we have in our precious town. Of course, we're always happy to receive any donations you feel compelled to share. We're so grateful to all the friends of the Kent Memorial Library. Helping us tonight is our technology point person, Amanda Myers. Please let us know, sorry, my dog. Please let us know if you have any tech issues and we'll try to resolve them. Um, some housekeeping things about the technology. We will mute everybody and show everyone's video during George's performance. We were chatting uh, before the performance, before this began and George likes seeing people bob their heads. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you are experiencing technical difficulties, please type it in the chat. You can find that down at the bottom of your screen. And Amanda will connect with you to troubleshoot. Um, if you have a question throughout the evening, also type it in the chat. And when there's time, uh, we'll call on you to ask your question. At the end of the performance, we will unmute or ask everybody to unmute. And we're going to give George a big round of applause. I'm sure he will have earned it. Tonight's program is Song Stories, Not Story Songs with songwriter George Potts. George Potts has been singing and playing music throughout Litchfield County for over four decades. After leaving a full-time music career in Chicago and relocating to Kent in June of 1976, he served for many years as the bassist for his father-in-law, Dolph Tremont's group, the Fife and Drum Trio. Since the late 90s, George has most often been seen as a member of the popular area quartet, the Joint Chiefs. The group enjoys a reputation for, quote, tight harmonies and loose attitude. Join us as Kent's own tells the stories behind some of the songs he's written, providing insight into what has sparked his writing and the adventures he has had along the way, finding the right word, stretching a rhyme, and breaking supposed rules. We'll see you next Wednesday, August 5th at 7, when the Masters of Kent returns with Building a Brand, How Frank Food Came to Life, presented by Frank Way. But please join me in welcoming our friend George Potts. Yay! Hey, guys. Sort of weird not to have people in front of me, but I do have people in front of me in the, in the virtual world. Um, First of all, let me start off by thanking Sarah Marshall, Lucy Pierpont, and Amanda Myers from our award-winning Kent Memorial Library, AKA the little library that could. Uh, for a town of 3,000 residents, we're blessed to have such a wonderful organization as a resource for all of us near and far. I encourage everyone out there in Zoom land to come back often for a virtual visit to see what they are up to in addition to this Masters of Kent series. So, to the subject at hand. Why does anybody write a song? It's a mystery to me. I, I guess that's as good a place to start as any. I've written out a little blurb here before I play my first song, so. Perhaps a little background is in order regarding my life and my early attempts at writing to provide some kind of context for you. I grew up in the 50s and 60s on the North Shore of Long Island, the youngest of five kids, listening to my older siblings' folk music records along with local, our local Episcopal church hymns and, local, and Broadway show tunes from my parents' albums. Everyone in my family sang, except for my mom, who thought she did, much to the concern of those just in front of her in church. But I did the normal kid things, lots of athletics, singing in school choirs, took piano lessons, and got my first electric guitar in 1964, about six weeks after the Beatles first appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show. Beginning in ninth grade, I attended an all-boys all boarding school here in Connecticut. And for some of my buddies out there, I know there's at least 
uh, one person who was married to a classmate of mine from the Taft School in Watertown. Hopefully there's more of you out there. Um, and I specialized in two things, ice hockey and music. The hockey helped me get into a, a, a great small college right outside Chicago called Lake Forest. And once there, the music helped me make the most of co-ed college life in the early 70s. It was the time of anti-war protests, the beginnings of the singer-songwriter era in contemporary music. And after two years, I quit the hockey team and formed a trio with two other classmates. We would play frat parties and try and woo the girls by performing songs by Simon and Garfunkel, Joni Mitchell, Stevie Wonder, Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young, and anybody. So music and guitars were everywhere in the early 70s. My, my two friends, in fact, uh, Neil Howe and Mitch Meyerson, started to write their own songs, both separately and together. And so after a while, I tried my hand at it, spurred on by a series of girlfriends who I chased with youthful wild abandon. Each song was essentially the same thing. Why did she leave me? Why didn't this work out? What's wrong with her? Not me, never me. So during a five-year span, the band actually had some decent regional success playing gigs uh, from southern Indiana all the way up to North Dakota. I actually played, if anybody in Kent remembers Ernie Schmutzler, he's a, uh, uh, he was born and raised in Minot, North Dakota, and I actually played Minot, North Dakota. But after the disappointment of not securing a record contract, I left the band and moved to Kent in 1976 where I worked at, uh, with my wife's family at the Fife and Drum restaurant for almost 10 years. And while I focused on the restaurant business, followed by a career in industrial sales for 30 plus years, I wrote occasionally as the responsibilities of work and fatherhood took up most of my time. Yet I always appreciated it as a craft, especially after getting hooked on the songs of younger contemporary writers like John Hyatt, Lyle Lovett, and Sean Colvin. And that led me back to earlier country writers like the Leuven Brothers and Hank Williams. So for me, on a personal level, I had this adventure. I've had this wonderful adventure in songwriting. It's a kind of a game and a mental exercise, a weird type of conversation that goes on both internally and externally. I think of every song as a puzzle, but one that has no box cover photo. So I can't refer, it's gonna take its own track. Most of the time a song, uh, excuse me, a song's full shape only reveals itself the further into the process I get. And it requires mental focus and an ability to block out all ex exterior distractions, something that is harder and harder to do in this age of constant stimulation from the media and electronic communications. There are some writers who have a gift that enables them to write music anytime, anywhere. That is not me. So my song ideas come from many different places, some from funny phrases I hear from friends in conversation, others from emotions that percolate up from the deeper parts of my psyche. Uh, I finish far less than I start, mainly because I struggle writing lyrics that don't sound trite or unoriginal or half-baked. I actually have a couple of songs that I've been writing for years that have never gotten past a couple of lines. And I have a few others that are 90, 95% done just waiting for the right arrangement or the right words to finish them off. I have two rules. Does the subject matter resonate wide enough to interest more than just me? And can the words and music express a subject in a way that's reasonably original? Three or four years ago, I vowed to try and focus more on becoming a better songwriter, and I've been lucky enough to attend a couple of workshops led by some great singer-songwriters. At one uh, by a lady by the name of Mary Gaucher uh, in Nashville about a year and a half ago. Uh, her last CD was actually co-written with returning veterans, and it was nominated for a Grammy last year. Uh, she's a wonderful singer-songwriter. Uh, Gaucher is spelled G-A-U-T-H-I-E-R. Um, and she's in the John Prine School of very simple words uh, to express really, really deep felt emotions. 
Um, I heard her at this workshop say, and I'll quote her pretty directly, nobody wants to hear you sing your diary. And those words really resonated with me because it brought me back to my early attempts at writing and the best of the best, the John Prines, the Stephen Sondheims, the Paul Simons, and even the older rock and roll writers like Lieber and Stoller, they use plain words to express concepts that are at once personal and universal. That's what every writer strives for, and some more successfully than others. With that goal in mind, I'm going to play a few of my tunes for you. Uh, I was going to say this evening, but I, if, as you can see, the sun isn't quite down yet. Um, they'll hopefully give you an idea of who I am and how my mind works. I'll also throw a couple of songs in by uh, other songwriters into the mix, ones that I genuinely appreciate for their clarity of focus, both by uh, people who, uh, who's, uh, who I appreciate who have never been famous. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, some of mine are meant to be funny and some are not. Uh, it is my earnest hope that you're able to tell one from another. Um, and I hope that after each of them, you'll have the opportunity maybe to ask a question. Maybe I'll go a couple of songs and maybe we'll see what the, what the chat room is uh, percolating up. And I hope to make this more of a conversation than a one-way concert. So please feel free to chime in. Um, you know, I just realized I don't have my chat. Let's see. So um, let's, let's talk about COVID for a second. Uh, let's talk about the restaurant business for a second. My wife has been involved with restaurant and in business for, you know, 40 plus years. Uh, and everything went quite topsy-turvy uh, in March. And uh, one of the things that I knew I could do to help her was to go back and, and help with some online stuff, some uh, digital marketing and whatever I can do. And uh, I'm not very good at the restaurant business and I'm, I'm ready to admit that. Um, and, and so a, a, about a month or six weeks into it, I just exploded one night and just didn't, uh, it wasn't very kind in terms of like just, I just wasn't having a good time. And having retired a couple of years ago, I, this is the last thing I thought I'd be doing, going back. Um, and so I said sorry to Alyssa and I, you know, I said it, but then I realized, you know, this is the, this is me. This is like sometimes how I express myself, not very often. Um, and it just got me thinking about all the things we do, all the things, all the people's habits. Uh, that are uh, part of their personalities, part of the way they are. And when you say, you know, I'm just, I, I can't do that. I shouldn't do that again. And especially, uh, oh, how am I going to get rid of that? Hold on a second. There. Um, especially when you know you've done something and you apologize, but you know you've got to do it again. So this is what came out of it. <laughs> And it's called Never Gonna Do It Again. So there's two, if you want to sing along at home, you know, you go ahead because there's a line that says, oh no. And just after it, there's a line that says, hell no. So if you feel inclined, you know, just uh, sing along. Sing along with George. Never should have had one more. Should have walked out that door Should have thought about the price I'd have to pay Holding my hurting head today And now I'm never gonna do it Oh no, never gonna do it again And no, I'm never gonna do it Oh hell no, never gonna do it do it again I 
could push that plate away I could do it any day And now I think I know just what this means it means I'm gonna need some bigger jeans And now I'm never gonna do it Oh no, never gonna do it again you no, know, never gonna do it, oh hell no, never gonna do it until I do it again. You know, quitting it ain't worth a pile of dimes. You can trust me, I've done it. Never mean to be a fool I never mean to blow my cool You know I never mean to make you cry Cause you know I'm not that kind of guy But now I'm never gonna do it Oh no, never gonna do it again you know, never gonna do it, oh hell no, never gonna do it, I'm never gonna do it, everybody, oh no, never gonna do it again, you know, never gonna do it, oh hell no, never gonna do it, till I do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really? No, keep it down. Keep it down. You know, I just want to let you know I'm wearing my favorite shirt, but I, I'm not wearing pants. So I'm wearing shorts. I'm just not wearing pants. Okay? I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable out there. So when my daughter Kate was 16, I don't even know where the Kate's on this tonight. I know she's got kid duty down in Nashville and... Uh, a lot of things going on. She was about 15 or 16, and she was date. She was a sophomore. She's dating a senior. And uh, Liz and I were a, a little uncomfortable, but you know, life has a way of sorting these things out. And um, uh, so I said, "So what's the, what's the guy like?" And she looks at me and she says, "Dad." He really grills my cheese. And I'm like, is this a good is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? You know, I you know, and and it it once again a line that that appeared out of nowhere. And fortunately there are lots of words that rhyme with cheese. So I was thinking about, okay, okay, I'm not gonna make it about not going to make it specifically about my daughter. It's going to be about a girl who treats a guy badly, and her name is Eloise. So this song is called Belle Eloise. It was uh, about written about 10 years ago. Excuse me. It was written about 20 years ago. My Belle Eloise, you got me on my knees. Every day I try and just to find a way A way to make you realize That my belle Eloise I give you a reason to stay So I can see the light of day In your eyes Oh, first you took most of my money Honey you made me pawn that old Cadillac But 
if you come home, I'll call you honey. Yeah, I'll give you the shirt right off my back. My belly Louise, you got me on my knees every day, trying just to find a way, a way to make you realize that my belly Louise, I'll give you a reason to stay. I can see the light of day in your eyes. You got your hand deep in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Girl, you got your finger in the pie. Girl, you set me off just like a rocket. And every time I cry I love the way you call me chubby mm -hmm. I, I love that quivering in my knee Rhymes with knees. But then you went and you introduced me to your hubby, your hubby. Oh, everybody, girl, you really grill my cheese. Billy Louise, you got me on my knees every day, trying just to find a way to make you. That bell and Louise I'll give you a reason to stay I can see the light of day In your eyes Bill Eloise. Uh, so she ended up breaking up. She broke up with the guy, and uh, he ended up going to Georgetown. She ended up going to Georgetown. She almost didn't want to go there because she thought she was going to run into a guy. I mean, what are there, five, 6,000 people on campus? And that's where she met her husband. So you never know. Any questions out there? Uh, anybody uh, have any questions uh, loaded into... You want to you want to check the chat, Sarah? I don't know how you want to do this. So, whatever. Okay. So, if you want to hold it. Yeah, to I have nothing yet, George. But uh. Oh, but you can't tell me nobody has a question out there, even if you say hello. Anyway, um. So, uh, let me throw this over here. Uh. It looks like Kent, Kent Clow was trying to um, ask a question. If you could just type it in the chat, then um, Sarah will um, ask it on your behalf, okay? Go ahead, Casey. Oh, yep, so you're still on mute. So if you could just type it in the chat for um, Sarah to read for you, that'd be great. Lindy wants to know where you learned to yodel. <laughs> Lindy is my sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I, it comes from years of wearing pants that are entirely too tight. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, I have, is that a drop D tuning on the guitar? Oh, this one, yes. Yeah. Yeah, just because I, just I didn't want to 
keep retuning a guitar. So I have, and these are the only two full-size guitars I own these days. I don't, I'm not a guitar collector. I am a, uh, uh, you know, they all serve a purpose. But and then, this, oh. this is a guitar, it's actually made, I don't know whether you can see the structure of it. It's actually made out of carbon fiber. Yeah, you can sort of see the carbon fiber. Anyway, so I can, I can take this outside and play it in the snow and it, it's not like wood, you know. Anyway. Um, so Kent Clow. Yeah. Kent Clow, yes. Kent Clow, he says he saw, he sees it's being recorded. How yep. do we get, I'm not sure, he get a little lost in there and he says he's hoping it will be posted on the Lake Forest College website. I, I, I don't, that's up to the library because the library is recording this and it will be available on YouTube. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll post a link. Um, and then Carol and Tom Franken want to know what kind of guitar that is. So, so the one I was playing was a Taylor, and this is a, a company called Rain Song. They're, uh, I can't remember whether they're in Hawaii or whether they're just in Seattle, but I think it was a bunch of guys that were working for Boeing in their, uh, you know, because they make their wings now out of carbon fiber, and they, so people have been making carbon fiber guitars now for maybe 20 years something at least um, and so it just doesn't have the thermal expansion and contraction that you know I mean I I keep a thermometer and a hygrometer I think hygrometer uh, so I know what temperature it is in this room and what the humidity is and in the winter it gets down to about 15 percent humidity and my wooden guitar just any wooden instrument hates that they want to keep they want to be about 40 50 percent and so I don't have to worry about that. With, and then the, the Hahnemans were wondering if you've ever written a love song for Alyssa. And I would add that doesn't involve grilled cheese. <laughs> oh, yes, I have. And believe it or not, it's the last one that I'm doing. So. Um, oh, good. So, so he, but here's another one that I wrote back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So here's, you know, I was talking about how, you know, when I wrote back in the 70s, mm -hmm. it was, um, you know, it was always about girls and it was always about what happened, blah, 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 you know, the problem or so. Anyway, this, this goes out to all my buddy. I don't know whether there's anybody who knew me back in the Chicago days. Oh, Casey, Casey Clow actually does. Uh, Casey went to Lake Forest. Casey Clow went to Lake Forest with me. So this song had its debut at Lake Forest College. <laughs>
We will meet again someday And the smiles that guide our way My Julia, my love Ah, yes. An oldie, but a, an oldie, but a goodie. We've had a request now, George, <laughs> for you to play This Is Your Lake Forest Friend, who would like you to play Gus's. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't, That's an inside I didn't, joke? <laughs> yeah, when we were, well, let's just say we were young, it was dark, we were confused. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, uh, we uh, many Lake Forest College students used to after an evening of reverie, show up at a place out on Route 41, which was the trucker route uh, west of Lake Forest, the north-south trucker route um, between Chicago and Waukegan and then Milwaukee eventually. Uh, and there was a truck stop called Gus's and it, it had a sign that said Gus's and below it had a sign that says eat. That was it. So, it was called, so we called it Gus's Eat. Anyway, so there were many funny college stories, let's just leave it at that, um, uh, that were written about Gus's. And the band I was in, the uh, band I was in when I was in Chicago was called Redwood Landing. And it was uh, uh, we, when we first left college and started playing in Chicago and, and, and uh, doing that, we, um, we, Gus's Eat was one of our most requested tunes. And it was just, it was a comedy tune. I mean, it, more than anything else. Uh, late at night when the moon is bright and you headed for your best pal to eat. You had a little talk of that real sweet smoke and you head out to Gus's Eat. All right, so you get it. I mean, it, it all went from there. So let's just, Casey, thank you for the request. I appreciate it. Uh, again, I was young. This is my, my nephew, Spencer. I have to give him, I have to laud him for allowing me to co-opt his phrase. I was young, it was dark, I was confused. <laughs> um, many, oh, here it is. Um, so I used to sing with the Kent Singers. Kent Singers have been around for many years. Um, and they are a choral group uh, with just wonderful, I mean, they're about 40 strong, 30 or 40 strong these days. And um, they, I was singing with them back um, in the late 90s and we did a, a concert at um, Music Mountain and it was a gospel concert. We actually learned a whole lot of wonderful gospel arrangements. Um, and at the same time, I was having a, a rather sizable disagreement with some people I was close to. And I just didn't understand their behavior and I was trying to figure out how to, uh, it, I, I, I had anger inside me, but I needed to express it somehow, but I also needed to express it in a way that wasn't, you know, grab a knife. Um, and so the two came together in this song because I was part of the gospel thing is, is you know, one day you're going to be up there and St. Peter's going to be at the door. You know, what'd you do? How'd you do? You know, and so that became this song, uh, which I've sung at a bunch of churches over the years because it's, it, it, it tries to express what I was going through, but in a, in a gospel way. Well, come that day when he calls your name. Will there be thunder, lightning, and rain? Will you rise up? 
will you fall in shame come that day when he calls your name I wish I had the blind boys of Alabama singing about it. <laughs> come that day when you reach that door St. Peter's going to ask you, what'd you come here for? Did you help your brother, or did you cause him pain? Come that day, when he calls your Could you play one of the songs you've written for the Joint Cheeks? Ah, well, I wrote that. that their version of that song is a little... Okay. And in fact, my next song is off the Joint Chiefs' second album. Sorry, second CD. <laughs> mm. It's just iced tea with a head. <laughs> so, um, uh, so this is... So Alyssa and I have been now been in this house for 30, this Christmas it'll be 39 years. And we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're, we love where we are. We love the fact that we can look at the hills across the valley. Uh, and uh, so uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of sycamores along if you ever look in back of the fife and drum on Main Street in Kent, there's a barn, big field, big field. Below it, in fact, is another field with a whole bunch of really old sycamores that have been there for years. And this is what came out of me thinking, I'm going to go down, sit under the sycamores, and you know, I didn't, but it was like, who would, you know, I had visions of uh, what's that. Uh, Pointillism painting the the island in the garden of the jet, you know, um, not Surat, but uh, anyway, the pointillist painting of the people on the promenade in France. Uh, so I was just thinking, what are people doing out there? Sycamores, love 
lovers laying out on their backs and pledging hearts forevermore. <laughs> Not my dog. And high above the big birds fly. Laser circles in the blue Coloring the memories of days we passed when love was new Well, I remember the songs we sang I remember the words we spoke And the promises we made underneath the sycamore shade than a memory closer than the distant shore water flows endlessly and two hearts are one forevermore well I remember the songs we sang but I remember the words we spoke in the promises we made underneath the sycamore shade Thank you. Thank you. I'm wondering, I think I have to change my screen view here because I'm seeing four people. Let me see if I can see more people. Hold on a second. Oh my God. Look at all these people. Oh, this is great. Hey, Ellen. God, oh my Lordy. How are you? How's everybody? Hi, Lou. Hi, Paul. My sister, Lou from uh, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Denny Vitrella. Oh my God, this is great. I love seeing all these faces. Oh, that's great. Hi, Margo. Hey, Margo, congratulations. Really, Margo. So everybody needs a car song. And uh, uh, about five years ago, uh, my father-in-law, who many of you know, um, uh, he passed away in uh, Christmas Eve 2016. So I must have written this in like 2013 or some sometime around then. Everything in my life was getting old, uh, inclu <laughs> including me. Um, and uh, uh, my, I was driving a Honda with 240,000 miles on it. I was uh, just, it was just one of those things that, uh, and, and I had this line that was like, I opened the door and there you are, my old car. And it was like, I'll, you know, it was sort of like, well, is it just another day? Is it, you know, what does this mean? I mean, I had that line, but I just didn't know where to go with it. And so it just became uh, a song about, I guess about being getting old, I guess. I know. Well, my old car has had a long day just trying to keep up with the trucks all on the highway. 
Miles are high Her tail's a little low But she still gets me Where I gotta go And she ain't quite as shiny As she used to be Even though she's getting slow She still looks good to me That old car She's had a long year And she's had more repairs Than you might care to hear Doing her time With her four wheels up in the air like a wounded bird Like an old Corvair And every time she's up there Like she's good for something new And I know I could be crazy But then what's a car to do? My old car, well, oh, she's had a long life, and I spend more time with her than with my own wife. And how could I have known that she'd be with me all these years? Cause I don't know where I'd go if she wasn't here. And I know you're out there thinking I don't love you anymore But each and every morning When I walk out that door There you are My old car well, There you are My old car My old car. So we have another request. Uh, John requests, take it out back. Uh, I didn't write that. Okay. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, John who? John Worthington. John Worthington. Oh, geez. okay. If, 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 if we have time, I'll throw that in. I'll throw uh, that in. Now, David Ray has mentioned that he doesn't think that's a song about a car. I would agree with David. You think? He's, he's deep. If anybody knows David Ray, if you don't know David Ray, you should. He is an amazing songwriter, amazing guitar player. Uh, he and I sort of found each other what, a couple of years ago, maybe. We started going to the same open mics and that kind of thing. Um, anyway, David Ray, yay. Um, so I went, I, so I did, I've been doing these songwriting camps. I mean, I did too. So it's not like it's where I spend all my time. Um, but I went to one in Woodstock called Camp Copperhead. And Camp Copperhead was actually named after Steve Earle, who's a, a wonderful sort of younger, rockier uh, uh, country writer. And the other, excuse me, the other instructor um, was Sean Colvin, and Ooh. although she was, you know, she was sort of in her own world, which was fine. I mean, she was, you know, I, I, I think she might have been going through something in, in real life, so I, I, I cut her a whole lot of slack. Um, 
And, but she said one thing that was really important. We had workshops and then you would co-write with people and it was just great, four days of, you know, no cell phones, just doing stuff. And uh, da in fact, David Ray has been to Copper, Camp Copperhead. Um, uh, and th th I went to a, co um, a lyric writing, because that's where I stumble a lot of times. I went to a, a lyric writing workshop, and there was a guy there who was 81 years old, and his name was John Christie, and he'd retired a few years before from some big medical company. He lived in Washington, D.C., and he brought in lyrics that were like, they were, it, uh, he, w he won a poetry contest at Chautauqua Institute in upstate New York the year before. So the guy could write poetry, but it was poetry, it wasn't lyrics. So I, I, I asked him whether I could take his lyrics and move them around. And I had never done this before. And um, so this is it. And it's called, it's called The End of the Line. And it's probably the rockiest thing I've ever written. That it's easy, you think we're the same. You're full in your cards, but you're still in the game. I'm in for a dollar, you're in for a dime, and that's all that is at the end of the line. Well, none of it's funny, none of it's fair. We're laughing our heads off, we're gasping for air. In for a reason. Just for a rhyme and that's all that there is at the end of the line Hold it together now, break it apart Stand to do nothing or tear out my heart Let me know I'm not wasting your time Stay with the baby till the end of the line Ride with the baby till the end of the line Till the end of the line So keep me in limbo I'll pay your price I'll roll my eyes back When you roll your dice Winner or loser I'll be just fine Stay with me baby Till the end of the line Says ride with me to the end of the line mm, To the end of the line <laughs> Oh yes, end of the line not quite the end of the line. So how are we doing time-wise? Well, we got, what we got, five up? I've got like, uh, if I do uh, take it out back, I've got four more. Is that gonna, will that hold? We, 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 we can do four more. All right, all right. You did promise us the love song you wrote for Alyssa, though. That's, that's gonna be the last one. All right. It's gonna be the last one. Or we're getting our money back. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Hey, Denny, how you feeling? You good? Good. Um, how do I want to do this? So, uh, I'll, I'll do this. Okay. Um, I, I've been to two songwriting camps, and the only thing in common with either of them was one person and her name is Rachel Lynn Harrington and she lives in Washington State and she's got a number of CDs out and she tours a little bit 
but but she's got a big fan club in England and she goes there usually once a year and plays. Um, so she came out with a CD this past year and it has a song on it called Memphis, which just did an earworm in my ear. Um, and it's, a, it's, I like to call it a, a, a song that's about the belated wisdom that can come from regret, regret being the word. Um, and the song is called Memphis. Well, I meant to go to Memphis, but first I found cocaine where she was waiting. Like a lost friend in the rain And I meant to go to Memphis Broke down Baton Rouge I was empty And she had whiskey can never grieve It just goes up in flame And lovers never leave They only change their name And I meant to write to you Austin took me in It was a place I went to Waiting for the end To begin can never grieve It just goes up in flame and Lovers never leave They only change their name and What I've come to believe from your friend Casey, George, who says, when did you know you could get up in front of people and play and sing? Mm. Or are you still trying to decide that? No, probably, probably, no, but yeah, really. I, 
you you think I know? No. <laughs> um, probably eighth grade, because I knew before I got the TAF, because I got the TAF in ninth grade, and it was, it was it was probably eighth grade. It was probably like a talent thing or something, playing guitar at day school on Long Island, you know, something like that. I definitely knew when I got to Taft. Plus, I mean, at Taft, we had we had Jeff Baxter, who was with the Doobie Brothers and all that. He was two classes above me, you know. And like, you see people like that playing, it's like, oh yeah, that's I want to be like him. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so Camp Copperhead, the last, uh, um, the last, next to last day, I was there. Uh, Sean Colvin little workshop and people are like oh 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 what's what's your trick you know give me give me a hint what do you do what's how do you latch on you know how do you and she looked out at everybody as everybody sort of calmed down she says I take naps <laughs> and what she said was in fact very profound because some of you may know, and maybe even maybe even Ron Marasco would, would say, you know, you write early in the morning. If you're going to write, you write early in the morning because you're closer to your subconscious, and it's more you than, uh, than writing later in the day when you've already had your brain filtering everything that's going on in the world. And I, I thought that was a really interesting thing. The following morning, I swear to God, following morning, I woke up, with the last two lines of the song in my head. And I wrote it down and it was originally, you, you, you pull my head down to your breast and fill my heart with happiness. There's no, there's no way I'll ever leave. And, it, and there it ended. It was like, and I'm thinking, well, is it gonna be a girl? No. And I, and I said, there's no way I'll ever leave New England. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, you know, you know what was funny though? Alyssa and I had been talking about, we had just had that discussion that couples have. Okay, we're getting to be a certain age. We've got some money put away. You know, are we gonna go to Florida? Are we gonna, you know, what are we, you know, after work, what, what are we gonna do? Where do we wanna be? And we decided, because we love it here in Kent, that we're not moving, we're staying in New England. So that brought on this whole, whole song. It brought on the whole song. So once I had those two lines, uh, it became this. Oh, I, I, saw, sorry. I saw my first bluebird yesterday. Though it seems a little early up our way But I watch her as she builds her home Raise the brood, fly off alone And it seems to me the cycle's getting earlier each year And maybe it's a harbinger or more I think it's at least a hint for sure Cause even though she has to go She'll be back before you know There's no way she'd ever leave New England Folks been leaving from the north a while and the rest of us, we live here in denial With our steady habits, our old routines And our factories, where we're filled with dreams And the time tests every bond we've made And drives a man to go But if one day like that bird I flew My heart would always come back Your silver shorelines, your firefly moons, your snowy Sunday afternoons. There's no way I'll ever leave New England. So fly on, bluebirds, go on down. Fly.
just like love there is a price we pay for things that we do gladly every day and we'll ignore the things we've lost and we'll happily forget the cost few will fully understand the reasons why we stay cause faithfulness and heartache go in hand and they run a debt you can't pay on demand and with a weak embrace and a parting line a long time lover leaves sometimes but there's no way I'll ever leave New England so to your chest fill my heart with happiness there's no way I'll ever leave New England <laughs> thank you lovely that's, that's the way I felt that day. <laughs> I, I know you're, we're running late, but I, there was a question, uh, someone asking us to tell us about your guitar, this one that you're playing. So this is a uh, Taylor 812 CE, C for cutaway, E for electronics. It's got a little pickup system and I plug it in here. And uh, I've had this guitar. I bought it new in 1996. Uh, I traded in an old big body guild that I had had that was just too big for me. It was just, you know, some of the big body dreadnought guitars are just, you know, I'm not that big a guy. What can I tell you? <laughs> Although I've gotten a little bigger over the years, but, but just body, body size, this fits me better. And the first, first time I, 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 I bought it at a place down in Hamden, which at that point was a Sam, no, it wasn't a Sam, it was called Brian's Guitars. And uh, I, I picked this thing up and I'm like, uh-oh. You know, it was, it's like going to the BMW dealership and just, <laughs> oh, I'll just take a little test drive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right, uh, so that's what it is. Taylor, uh, m sort of a, a Martin style guitar, but made in California using a lot of uh, modern technology with CNC cutting and drilling machines and all sorts of stuff. And they make them in California and they have a, uh, another facility in Mexico. Um, so this next song is one of my, I call it one of my COVID songs. Um, so uh, I, I, how do I, how do I talk about this? So I was watching Cas Casablanca. You know, and there's that line where the two guys are walking off, uh, Claude Rains and Humphrey Bogart are walking off at the end, and it's, Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful relationship or something like that. And I looked at it and said, yeah, it's like a bromance, and my light bulb just absolutely lit on fire over my head. And so I could call it my bromance, but it's, <laughs> it, it's because there was a song called My Romance. There is. So, and it's a great song. I, I love the song. In fact, I've, I used to sing it for my mother-in-law when she was still around. I used to sing it. <laughs> um, so this is probably the most fun I've ever had writing a song, but it's got everything, including the kitchen sink in it. Now, that being said, there is a Kevin Costner reference somewhere in this song. Your job is to catch it, okay? We're on it. Well, I think that it's time to let you know how I feel. Compliment your style, maybe pick up a meal. Well, you must admit it. We 
we like each other so far So if you agree it's been good up to now We could take the next step <laughs> Long as our wives allow We could be bosom buddies Just like Kobe and Shaq Teammates forever, a two-man rat pack. Dynamic duo, if we give it a chance. This could be the start of a fine bromance. <laughs> thank you for, thank you for your laughter. I appreciate it, sir. <laughs> We could stay out late and make our wives all pissed. We could get up early, go fish, and ignore that honey-do list. We could argue about football. We could name each other, nickname each other Scooter and Bub. I'd take the kids camping or out for a cruise. Double our pleasure when we do it in twos. Bosom buddies. Like macaroni and cheese Tacos and Tuesdays Honey and beans Partners in crime Like Butch and Sundance Buddy, this could be the start of a fine bromance Could be bosom buddies I'll be Keith Richards You can be Mick Oh, you do your dancing and I lay down that leg room. A tag team of two like a tight pair of pants. Brother, this could be the start. We could be Homer and Jethro, Axel and Slash, Jordan and Pippin. Crosby and Nash, we could be Brady and Gronk, we could be Nuke and Crash, we could be Donner and Blitzen, Cold Beef and Hash, we could be famous, the world will know at a glance, and this was just the start of a fine bromance. Oh yeah. Uh oh, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah. So uh, now I've got to remember the name of the guy that wrote this song. Chuck Brodsky. Chuck Brodsky. It's from uh, the Carolinas. I'd like to dedicate this song to the Housatonic Valley Association. Well, the ash from the wood stove filling out the bucket, coming out the top, so where am I gonna chuck it? Take it out the back door, where I never mow. Find a little place where I could just let it go. Gonna take it out back, throw it in the river. Take it out back, throw it in the wood. Take it out back, chuck it down the hillside. But keep the front yard looking good. <laughs> TV. It quit on me, brother. It was 10 years ago, so I got me another. The first one sitting out by the porch swig. My original 
when a bunch of other things are going to take it out back, throw it in the river, take it out back, throw it in the wood, take it out back, chuck it down the hillside, keep the front yard looking good. This is a dog friendly performance, Sarah. I just want to make sure you know that. It ain't got no motor. If it had any gas, I'd try and explode her. Hubcaps, hoods, old transmission. Just take him to the river. Gonna make some good fishing. Gonna take him out back. Throw him in the river. Take him out back. Throw him in the woods. Take him out back. Chuck it down the hillside. I'll keep the front yard looking good. The stuff in the fridge, well, it's all turned green, and the chicken bones have been picked clean. Some on the counter, some on the floor. Let's take them out the back door. Everybody, gonna take them out back, throw them in the river. Take them out back, throw them in the wood. Take them out back, chuck them down the hillside. Keep the front yard looking good. We're gonna take them out back, throw them in the river. Take them out back, throw them in the wood. Take them out back, chuck them down the hillside. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, the sun's down, and uh, the big hand is inching away from 8 o'clock, so, which means it's time for me to take another nap. Uh, thank you all for allowing me to uh, appear in your screens this evening. Uh, thanks to all our friends from uh, Camp Copperhead, and especially the wonderful Lydia Hutchinson at Performing Songwriter Workshops out of Nashville, Tennessee, a wonderful publisher who published a, a great magazine that people like me read like a Bible for a number of years and uh, uh, shut down the publishing end of it and now does uh, singer-songwriter workshops, which are wonderful. They're always small and focused, and that's where I got to meet uh, Mary Gaucher. And, and I met the guy that wrote, I'd like to teach the world to sing. <laughs> All right? Uh, and he's a pretty impressive dude. I mean, he says, yeah, that song, wow, yeah. That, that got me two wives and two houses. And, you know, it was, anyway. Um, so. You promised us a love song. I know, I know. I just have to remember what I, um, what I play it on. You're not playing it on your heartstrings? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, this, this, in fact, I, I don't know what came first. So. It, I don't know whether it started as a guitar piece or whether it started as a song. I think it started as a song, but I play it both ways. I play it like. But I also play it as. A love song, and I wrote this for Alyssa probably in about 1985. So uh, thank you all. Thank you, uh, Kent Memorial Library, Kent Memorial Library. give you all permission to go right to bed after this, okay? <laughs>
Thank you all so much. Oh, George, that was lovely. Thank you so much for sharing your Yay! 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 More! 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 Okay. Yeah. No bars. bars? What's a bar? We don't have those things in Florida anymore. Loved <laughs> <laughs> <Diana>. it, George. <laughs> you sounded great. Thank you, Annie. Hey. Thank you. Hey. Charlie, my three sisters. Beautiful, George. And Thanks, Cam everybody. Great. Amy. Thank you. It's just wonderful to see all your faces. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Loved it. Thanks, dear. Oh. Yep. Can we do it next week? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to play music at the Fife again. So we're just have to figure out how to do that inside. I'm probably going to have to do it outside when the weather gets more decent and cool. You know, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, well we can't wait to hear you again, George. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. George we Thanks need to see that and post this on the Lake Forest College website. <laughs> All right, George, thank you. Well, you know, they'd be drawing mustaches. And <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. We hope to see you thank next you. week. Thank, Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Kent. Thank you, Kent Memorial course. Library. Thanks for doing this. Of course. Casey, so library for doing this. you have to say hello to Judy Perkins over there because she's a Lake Forest College graduate also. If you can, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not, ah. I'm not going to yeah. say what I promise. <laughs> I'll have to come down to Kenton. We'll have a cocktail and we'll all get together. <laughs> That's it. Life with music. Hey, I can't see Elliot, but he's there. Hey. Hey, Al. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Hiding there. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Love right. to Alyssa. I'm gonna sign off, and I will. I will. Thanks, Casey. Okay. Good night, George. Okay. Thanks, George. Thank, Thank you, George. George. Good night, so George. Much to see all you people. It's great fun. Thank you, everybody.